Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share. You're not going to want to miss any of this. All right, so today, you all, is for all my comic book fans, all my graphic artists, and all the people who just love cool stuff. I want to introduce you to the owner, founder, and creator, if you will, of Doodle On Demand. His name is Derek Fleece, and if you haven't seen his Instagram, you are going to be stunned. Y'all, please welcome Derek to the show. Hi, Derek. <laughs> Good morning. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Now, I alluded in the introduction to your Instagram, and we are still going to talk about that, but First of all, Derek, tell me what you do as far as your doodles on demands. What's that all about? Um, I'm a freelance comic book artist, and I do commission artwork on the side as well. Um, and it is a side gig. I'm more of a, I don't know if it's a hobbyist because it takes up a lot of time <laughs> to to just be a hobby. But I, I draw every day, and people like my stuff and, and buy them. i uh, published a couple of books. And they will be going live. I guess I don't know what the proper term for it. They'll be available for purchase uh, sometime in the fall. So Ooh. a couple of children's books. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, it's so funny because you say that, like, you know, everyone does this. Everyone draws. Everyone doesn't draw. <laughs> Have you seen my drawings? No. You know why? Because they're awful. So I, I've seen <laughs> some of the work that you do, and it really is amazing. So tell me, how did you get started with this? Were you the kid drawing on the desk in school? Uh, not, not, not on the desk. Uh, I was probably a little too much of a rule follower to be doing that. But I did have my, my notebooks, and I always drew inside my notebooks and doodled on the side or had a little scrap of paper that I was doodling on as I was growing up. And I probably got started when I was very young. Uh, drawing with my mother, honestly, she's a she's a fantastic artist who doesn't do it enough, but she got me started, and it just was a passion that carried on into my adult life. So, I, I just and I love to share it with others. Yeah, and you do a you do beautiful work. I love it that your Instagram and everything is called Doodle on Demand. What you're doing is not doodling. <laughs> We are going to, we're, you, y'all will be stunned at what he does on his Instagram, but it is the coolest thing ever. Now, Derek, before we got started, you mentioned something and I told you I was going to ask you because I didn't know. What is the difference between a graphic artist and, and a comic book artist? I didn't know there was a difference. Uh, well, when you're talking about graphic artists, do you mean the graphic novel part of it? Graphic novels versus right. a comic book. Right. Um, they're not too different. If you want to think about it, uh, comic books are kind of the magazine format of comic books. Mm -hmm. And then your graphic novels are going to be those collected editions where they take maybe six, anywhere from six to 40 issues and they can come in, you know, paperback or you'll have the nicer hardback copies, which I have a ton of because I, I just see. think they look prettier on the show. <laughs> I'm they, definitely they stand a collector up easier. <laughs> Yeah, they do. They do. They're they're a little bit more durable too. Yeah, so. they are. Man, that is so cool. Now, I know you you mentioned earlier that you've done a couple of books. You also have a comic book series. What is that series called? Uh, it's called Space is Awful. It is a comic sci-fi, uh, all ages appropriate. Um, uh, it's been described a lot of times as uh, Galaxy Quest meets Thor Ragnarok. If you if you wow. want to have okay. It. <laughs> describe it it's it's pretty silly but it's a lot of fun yeah and, and and where can we get these because i know you got your children's books that are coming out in the fall and then you have your, right this is awful that's out right now where could we get where can we find your book uh space is awful right now is more of an independent independent um venture and we are working on getting a publisher we've had a couple of interested publishing companies and it's more of a navigating thing when to release it because we're there's still more story to be told uh, we'd like to get it into a graphic novel format. So that's something we're tr still trying to uh, 
uh, navigate. As far as the children's books are concerned, we do have two children's books series. One is Miki's March and the other is uh, Schmonster the Monster. And they will be published by uh, Tabletop Teaching Publishing. And those will be coming out in the fall of this year. Awesome. Congratulations. I think that is so cool. Thank you. So when you started doodling, again, it's not really doodling when you see what he does. So when you started doodling, how did you know that you had something that people wanted to buy? And, and where did you get started selling them? When I, I started selling them at uh, small comic book shows. Uh, so the comic book conventions, we had uh, a mini convention. I would say my first comic convention was a small one during Halloween, maybe only four, four tables in the back of a comic book store in Amarillo. And somebody said, hey, that's a cool picture. Can I buy it? I'm like, hey, people want to buy my stuff. And so I just started doing more of that. And I like sharing my work. And if people like to buy it, that's great. If they have requests, I, I do requests as well. I so, do. Okay. So yes, when you, what kind of requests do you get? I mean, I'm sure someone's um, coming up to you going, hey, can you paint my dog? You know, or do you? Um, I do not do too many dog ones. I think if you wanted to ask what I did, I I'll say try to be true to yourself and try to stay in your your lane and draw what you're passionate about. That way your your talents and your your passion comes through on the work. What I do love is obviously comic book work. I love superheroes and, and things along those lines. So I get a lot of requests nowadays for um, – either your favorite superhero or the big one that I've been getting a lot of requests for is can you draw a family member as their favorite superhero? Um, I just did a series of uh, three drawings for uh, a grandmother who wanted to give her grandkids a positive body image and, you know, see themselves as superheroes. So we had Hulk, She-Hulk and Batman, which were their favorites. And so I did a, all of them with, you know, kind of their likeness. And I'm not a portrait artist by any means. Oh, I just made a big old noise there and shook the table. Sorry, my camera's probably shaking. Okay. <laughs> but um, yes, I did draw, I did. I drew her grandkids, kind of a likeness and and added them to a superhero body. And mm -hmm. it was, yeah. And, and that's a very common one that I get requested for. And it is daunting because I'm not, a, I, I get very self-conscious about, oh, am I, does the picture look enough like them? Uh, but I try to put that disclaimer at the front. It's one yeah. of those. Um, you know, I'm not a portrait artist. I'll get as close as I can. And <laughs> but that, what a neat idea, though. Because in my mind, I would look amazing as Batgirl. I'm just putting that out there. I'm just saying. Right, right. Because <laughs> I'm a fan. So, Derek, you and I met a number of years ago, randomly. <laughs> We were both, both of our families, I think, were traveling. You all were coming from Comic-Con or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we met in a hotel lobby and we played cards. I think we were playing Uno, weren't we? Uno and Chicken McNuggets. <laughs> and Chicken McNuggets, that's right. And I remember we had me, you, your partner, and some of my family, we had a serious conversation about Batman and DC Comics. Do you remember that? <laughs> Oh, uh, vaguely. I, I I think I probably stepped out a little bit and let my uh let my writer take over on the conversation because yeah. oh. he has a lot more a uh, much bigger knowledge of comic book lore than I do. Oh, we had the best time. And I remember then thinking, oh my gosh, these guys are really amazing. And I remember too, you you were actually you were doodling something on a napkin or something. And we were we came up and we're like, wow, that is cool. You're by yourself. Can we bum rush your table? And so, <laughs> and it was, that was a great night all around. It was a lot of y'all were, y'all were the, uh, y'all were definitely the highlight of our evening. We did, we had a rough day at, com uh, at Comic-Con and we were both kind of sulking and I just went out in the lobby to do some, some drawing. And as soon as y'all showed up and kind of livened up the place, I ran and got him out of the room. I said, you got to come out here. You got to meet these people. I remember. <laughs> And we great had night. such a great time. It is so cool. So now, Derek, you though you do doodling on demand, you also have a lot of other things you've got going on. Can you tell us a little bit about your music, your martial arts, and your what you call it, your your real gig? What else do you do? Oh, I am a full-time nurse 
clinical informaticist. Uh, I work with the uh, documentation, the EMR, the electronic medical record system for our, I guess, our health system of Providence. Uh, I do that as my full-time job. I also, maybe four nights a week, I'm a Taekwondo instructor with Big Sky Taekwondo, and I am a worship leader at our church yeah. every weekend. So I play whatever, I play keyboard and guitar. So I kind of bounce between whichever, whichever <laughs> one they need. So. Exactly. Well, all of us who've been in church, we all understand how that goes. Uh, so you do all of these things. And then I love the word that you said, your hobby is the drawing. Where do you? <laughs> find the time sir uh, maybe that's why i call it doodle on demand uh because it is it's not a dedicated thing i do it a lot but i tend to draw when i'm listening to something or watching television or just kind of enjoying you know time out having my coffee at a, maybe a coffee shop or something like that so i draw a lot i i either have my ipad and I, I rarely tied to my drawing table unless I'm working on a commission. I try to do most of my commissions on paper rather than digital. Um, there's that personal touch to it. So I, I really like to do drawings on paper and traditional more with pencil and, and ink. Um, as far as finding time, it's whenever. I, I do keep a lot of late nights or I wake up early mornings so I can carve a little time out because I do get kind of antsy if I haven't drawn in a few days it's it's just it's part of me it's something that I do and maybe that's why I like to call it doodling because for me it's kind of that outlet and kind of just being myself for a little bit in my own in my own time I, I just think that is so great so if so you started young and you started with someone if somebody that's watching this right now and says oh my gosh he's doing what I want to do as an artist, what three things would you tell them to get started? Um, I think a lot of it comes from having passion for it. If you have a passion for it, then do it every day and mm -hmm. work on getting better at it, improving every day. You don't get better at something without a lot of practice and draw everything, draw everything. Once you find your niche and kind of find your audience, I would say a lot of it is going to be work on improving and give yourself some grace. And don't don't compare yourself to other people. Uh, mm -hmm. They look great. They draw something so well, but that's probably because they've been practicing it for the last couple of decades. And give yourself some grace, give yourself time to grow and, you know, uh, put some time into it. Uh, invest in your in your talent. That's so, good. Invest in your talent. Did you ever go to art school? Did you, you I, know, what kind of investment uh, <laughs> in you did you make? So uh, I made the roundabout kind of way into getting into nursing. I originally was a pre-med student. And when I discovered that I did not want to become a doctor, I had a one semester stint where I thought, okay, I'm going to go take art classes in college and see if I, what I can do with it. And I was doing this on my own steam with whatever money I was making. And I went broke very quickly yeah. <laughs> between art supplies and paying for classes. So yeah. I said, maybe I should start looking at something else. And that's kind of when I got made my way to nursing school. Um, so, no, I, I don't have a whole lot of formal training. A lot of it is uh, mentorship. I met a wonderful artist here in Lubbock, Texas, uh, by the name of Will Terrell. He is a phenomenal creator. He's worked for Warner Brothers. But when I first moved to Lubbock, he kind of took me under his wing and and kind of pointed out, you know, with a little bit of that constructive criticism uh, saying, OK, well, you need to work on this or we need to draw this or maybe get a sketchbook and don't be afraid to completely destroy these drawings that you cherish. And he really got me in that mindset of it's just a drawing. You know, you can move on to the next one. You can always draw later. And so by the time you move forward about 10 to 12 years, you've drawn so much and you forget the drawings that you that you messed up and you just become more confident and it becomes part of you. So that's interesting. Do you teach do you teach others 
to draw as well? Or do, are there people that you are mentoring in this? As not well? really. I, I do not. Um, my kids draw and that's probably the most I do right now. I, obviously I have a lot going on, so yeah. <laughs> there's not a lot of time for, for teaching uh, between teaching martial arts and then a full-time job. Um, yeah. And I, I do, I, I get a lot of questions at conventions and I like to give tips and, and tricks here and there. And I think one of my biggest tips is stop trying to be somebody else, you know, stop trying to be somebody else, find your own voice, draw from life and then find your way of interpreting it instead of trying to become a, a Xerox machine, a photocopier. Um, be authentic, be who you are. Right. That's where it's all going to shine. So, Derek, if somebody did have a question for you, where is the best place for them to reach you? I, I am available on Instagram and Facebook. You can find me on Facebook at uh, they're both Instagram and Facebook. They're both doodles on demand. So awesome. Don't worry, you guys, if you didn't get that, everything, all of his contact information is going to be on the description below. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share this channel as well. And if you or someone you know has an inspiring story or a topic we have to talk about or a small business that you'd like to highlight, go over to our website at faithonfriday.com and send us an email. We would love to hear from you. Derek, my friend, before I let you go... We have to play a game. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yes. I'm not ready. Do I need to warm up? Is no, that you're something good. I need you're, to do? Stretching? You got this. Oh, okay. Okay. You got this. So the game is called This or That, and it's pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two things, and you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play, oh. my friend? As long as you don't judge me too harshly on my choices. So. <laughs> well, not really. I don't promise. But here we go. Android or iPhone? Oh, iPhone. Mm, okay. Read the book or see the <laughs> uh, Read the book. However, I don't have a lot of time to watch the uh, I was going to say, <laughs> when? When would you do that? Okay. Wallflower or life of the party? Ooh. My wife would say I vacillate somewhere in between. It just kind of depends on my mood. Maybe maybe more wallflower most days. Okay. All <laughs> right. We'll see about that. Summertime fun or winter wonderland? Oh, I'm winter wonderland kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan. All right. Eat to live or live to eat? Ooh, eat to live. All right. Out in nature or in the house? In the house. <laughs> Derek, wait, you went from winter wonderland to in the house. I don't get it. Oh, uh, well, the, well, in the house is where the air conditioning is. And summertime, it's too hot. I don't like being out there. I'd rather be cold and bundled up if I'm going to be outside. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Coke or Pepsi? Uh, Coke. All right. Drive the car or ride in the car? I like to ride in the car. That's interesting. I, wow. Okay. And it's, the funny part of that is because, um, so my wife gets car sick a lot whenever somebody else is driving in the passenger seat. So over the last maybe decade, we found that it just works better if I sit in the passenger seat, yeah. keep her company and we talk or I take a nap and she doesn't get car sick. So she, she's fine driving, which is Perfect. completely okay with me. Yeah, I understand completely. <laughs> okay. I like sports or I don't care depends on the sport i would probably say more don't care um okay it probably takes it would it probably would take more time for me to watch sports and take time away from the other things that i like to do which is and so. where would you find time I'm exactly kidding. and finally derek what was your first job my first job was mowing lawns with uh other side of the fence was the name of the company what a cool name how old were you <laughs> Uh, 17. Very nice. I like it. Derek, thank you so much for joining us. This has been so much fun. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. All right, y'all. That's it for this time. But don't worry. We'll be back again with more Faith on Friday Presents. <laughs>